Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the brand new particle node that is now available in Blender 2.91. Now this is due to a lot of requests from two videos ago that we did the Blender update and you guys just want to see how it works once this tool is out and yes it is you know sort of available for anyone who wants to practice with it play with it before the final one comes out so if you simply go over to blender.org go over to download if you download blender 2.91 you will be able to actually follow along and get good with this on the other hand the interface doesn't look like what it should as this is still under development and of course once we get into everything notes there are certain you know ui changes that is definitely going to come so with Blender 2.91 open, if you would like to get active with this, you need to go over to Edit, go over to Preference, and with Preference open, you need to go over to Experimental and turn on New Particle System. If you don't do this, you'll probably not be able to get this going. And once that is done, simply click right here, save all preference. So once you restart Blender, you'll be able to get this one going. So first things we need to do is to get rid of the default cube, hold down shift and tap A, go all the way here and click on point cloud. Now, once you have your point cloud there, the next thing which you need to do is stretch this all the way out, click right here and switch to simulator editor. And it looks pretty simple from here onwards. So. With our point cloud here, what we would like to do is go over to our modifier properties, click right here and click on simulation. And of course, we need to also make sure that we have a simulation happening here. And you'll probably notice there's nothing, you know, fanciful going here. There's no idea of anything that we can do. But if you click on the plus button, you notice we have this called simulation and we can now attach that simulation right here. So with this done, the next thing which we would like to do is hold down shift and tap A on the keyboard, go over to this part where we have as output and click on particle simulation. Now once you select this, press the period key, you'll be able to zoom right in. Of course you would notice here that we have this called particle simulation. We can click, copy and paste this here. So this is the name of the simulator that is going to happen at a given time. You can actually go in here and change this to PS, press the enter key and of course if you copy this, paste it, it is still definitely going to work. So what you need is a name that the data path can actually look forward to. So with this here, if you go through and press the playback button, nothing happens. So what we would like to do is tap shift and A on the you know, viewport and assign a grid. Now this grid is where our simulation is going to take place and we can simply tap shift and A one more time, go over to this part called emitters and you'll notice that we have some new nodes that are still under mockup. So you can notice that we have this one called mockup. It simply means that it is available but probably might not be able to work at the time. So we'll delete that, tap shift and A, go over to where we have the emitters one more time, click on particle mesh emitter, click this out, you know, attach this to where we want it to be, click from here and make sure we have ourselves that grid. Now, once we have the grid, we can go through and press the playback button and you notice the emission starts happening right there. So there is a whole lot of things that you can do with this. And I think it just makes sense for you to be able to have your timeline so you can play back these things wherever or however you want. So with this here, let's take a look at some of the cool things that we can actually do. Because you notice we also have events and forces. So if we also go over to the section called events, we can trigger certain events. Of course, there are a whole lot of events that we can trigger. And we are going to start with the very first one that everybody kind of like, which is trying to eliminate the particles when they get to a certain point. So for that, we're going to select the age reached. And once we do that, we can click and drag this all the way here. So let's make this about a thousand. And if we play this back, you will notice nothing really happens because we haven't actually added an execution node. So if we would like to add that, we'll go over to execute and say kill particles. So this kill particle will execute anything once it gets to the age of three. So if we set this all the way back, press the playback button. Of course, this is going to play for a very long time, but if we start dialing this all the way down to about, let's say 0.5, let's do that. Press the enter key, go all the way back, press the playback button. Once it gets to 
0.5 once the age gets to that point it actually dies out so you can also choose to plug in a different node that will control these altogether if this is also something you want if you would like to keyframe these you can also choose to do that for the force let's get rid of this right now since we already know what it does and let's also get rid of this so for the force if we also go all the way here and click on force and assign the force we can choose to you know link either a vector node to these or we can simply use the x y and z value to control where we would like the force you know which is probably the wind you know something like that the direction that this is going to go through so if we reset this all the way back and press this one more time you know the playback nothing happens but once we set this to a very small number like that go all the way back and press playback of course you can start noticing that we have some sort of motion happening there and this motion can actually become very interesting because you can control this and at the same time you can tweak it to your own personal liking so what do i mean by this what i mean by this is very simple if we choose to say we would like this to be controlled by an object so let's simply you know say we would like to create an object right about a point like this let's go over here create a very tiny uv sphere and let's scale this down all right and we come right over here and we choose to say we would like the object transform so let's just simply type that object transforms so we would like these to be transformed by an object right here and we choose to select the sphere if we go ahead and press the playback so let's do that and tap G on the keyboard and move this around, you would notice that our particles are now being transformed by the position of our object. So depending on what you would like to achieve with this, this is going to come in very, very handy. And of course, you can simply animate this object and get the particles to follow suit. And this is going to make for a very good particle simulation. Some other note that we can also take a look at is right here within the part where we have the event. So within the events, we can also choose to play with the particle attributes. Let's actually get rid of this, go all the way to where we have events particle birds connect this one right there and then we choose to set our attributes of course you can find that across and then we choose to set our attributes we can connect this over to this one and once we do that we can choose to play with either the float which is a zero point value we can choose to play with integer all of these data types are here for your personal use so for this example what we would like to do is we might want to play with the velocity for example or maybe we want to play with the float let's actually start out with the float so with the float right here there are certain attributes that you need to call on for certain things to happen for example within the name section i can choose to type the word radius so let's get that going and press the playback button you notice nothing actually happens okay so nothing is happening because our radius is set to zero 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 if i choose to increase this by a certain number say for example 0 0.9 press the playback button you now notice we have a chunk of particles coming out we can also go ahead and turn this down and you know play with it however we want and this is also a very good way that you can get started with playing with a couple of these things so if you're thinking about playing with the particle attributes yes of course you can do that if you're also thinking about playing with things like velocity that should exist within the vector section so for example let's say within this section i choose to type the word velocity and press the enter key you would notice that we have all of our particles on the floor the reason why we're having these things on the floor is we haven't actually assigned any velocity number one number two we haven't told it where or you know what axis it should go so if we start punching this all the way up so let's stop that reset you know punch this all the way say 0 0.1 for example press the playback you can now notice the movement that it has for some reason this actually works and stops it works and stops so for this particular section right now i would suggest that you go in and type it yourself let's set this to four press the playback button of course you can start noticing that will have a much more faster velocity going in right there and of course this tool is just getting started and there is just a whole lot of things that you might want to get you know going with it at the same time you can still choose to get some very uh, interesting looking stuff happening with your scene and for example let's say we want to you know create some sort of interesting stuff i don't know how interesting this is going to be we're just going to play with it 
So I have this right here and already we know that once we press the playback button this is happening let's get rid of that and let's talk about the forces so for the force now i'm just going to go ahead connect the force right here which is what we have so let's move this over here connect this force okay so what we want to do is we want to drive the velocity by using the particle attribute so for that i'm going to just simply type the word particle attribute and then with the particle attribute right here let's simply connect this and you already know we are going to make this a vector since we're feeding it over to a vector so i'm just going to go ahead and make this a vector let's connect that right there so there is a keyword known as position so we've actually looked at three different keywords so there's a position there's a radius and there's a velocity and these are the ones i have you know on the top of my head probably there is going to be more documentation about this one later so you guys can actually take a look at it so if i type the word position and press the word enter and we run this all the way back press the playback button you would now notice that we have this sort of cool effect okay so we have this sort of cool effect if i hold down g move this around you know move it around you can notice we have this sort of cool effect and you can notice that the particles are traveling this way and of course there's a whole lot of things right here that you can actually come through and play with so all of these ones are here as well so you can set this you can kill you can get some stuff going on there there are some mock-ups that are still you know in works of course these ones are going to make sense when they're out and we have a couple of other things right here so something else which i seem to have forgotten to mention is you can choose to position a whole lot of things or you know create several emitters okay so if you want to create another mesh emitter for example you can go over to the emitters where, where is it yeah you can go over to this and you can connect it right there let's say we create a torus for example yep you can load that torus right there and you can you can you know you can give it as as, as much numbers as you want let's actually make this a 2000 number and if you press the playback button you can see they are all doing the same thing all right so depending on what you want to get depending on what you want to achieve you can go over to the documentation right here and read up some of these things so these are more of the kind of things that they're looking forward to create and hopefully the user interface is going to be worked on properly and we're going to have this nice looking user interface and of course if you like to get this tool and try it yes there's going to be a link in the description where you can check it out and at the same time please take a look at the links in the description if there are add-ons tools and stuff that you like to get there's going to be a wonderful link in the description where you can check out some of the cool tutorials that we found on yahoo that you guys would definitely like so this is definitely going to be about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace